President Buhari on Wednesday unveiled the redesigned Naira notes across the 200 Naira, 500 Naira and 1000 Naira denominations. Hi, welcome to what's happening at this at the top 10 stories. At number one, President Muhammad Buhari on Wednesday unveiled the redesigned Naira notes across the 200 Naira, 500 Naira and 1000 Naira denominations. Buhari unveiled the notes at the council chambers of the State House. Meanwhile, the CBN Governor Godwin Emafiele said the amount of money that can be redrawn from the counter would be reduced drastically, adding that bulk redrawal would require several procedures and security checks to track its use. This, he said, would ensure a steady transition into a cashless economy. He also said the new note would go into circulation before the December 15, 2022 date earlier stated by the central bank. And number two, the appellate court Sokoto division has struck out an appeal by the Zamfara People's Democratic Party and three others seeking to uphold the party's governorship primary, which earlier held in Zamfara state. According to the court, the appeal had to be dismissed for lack of merit. The presiding judge, Muhammad Shuaibu, while reading the judgment, described the appeal as a mere academic exercise. Justice Shuaibu stated that the appellants have their constitutional rights to appeal. However, the judge added that the issue before the court is beyond the stipulations of the individual's constitutional rights. Justice Shuaibu said by complying with the order of the lower court and participating in the fresh primary, the appellants have lost the rights to appeal. At number three, President Muhammad Buhari has written the Senate seeking for the confirmation of his special assistant on new media, Loretta Onoche, as chairman of the Niger Delta Development Commission. President of the Senate, Senator Ahmad Lawan, who read the letter from President Buhari, read out the other 15 members making up the list for the NDDC. Soon after the list was read, the Deputy President of the Senate, Senator Ovie Omogege, representing Delta Central, however, protested that there was no representation from Delta states in line with the Act establishing the NDDC that each state of the NDDC must have a representative. At number four, the Nasara Police Command says its detectives from Area Command New Cairo have rescued six young girls and a baby of about six months after busting a baby factory located in Adokasa. In a statement signed by its public relations officer Raman Nansel on Wednesday, it noted that the girls and the baby were rescued at St. Bridget Orphanage Home, operated by one Eze, Ezeogu, Norbert and others. He said that preliminary investigation revealed that the operator of the orphanage home abducts underage pregnant girls, holds them hostage until they give birth and sell their children to the highest bidder. The police said the suspects and victims have been handed over to the National Agency for Persecution of Trafficking in Persons for further investigation and prosecution. At number five, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill to establish a commission to tackle out of school children, particularly the Almajiri. The bill, sponsored by Shehu Kakale and 18 others, was debated on Wednesday and passed. Leading the debate on the bill, Kakale disclosed that the commission will have the mandate to provide for a multimodal system of education to tackle the minutes of illiteracy, help in skill acquisition and entrepreneurship programs, and prevent youth poverty, delinquency, and destitution. The speaker, Femi Bajabiabinla, in his contribution, argued that the bill is in line with the commitment of the Ninth House to Education. However, Reps member Ike Boju Boluka faulted the focus on Almajiri. He argued that it should have covered all out of school children. At number six, the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Mamadou Bouhari has approved a review of the national anti corruption policy of the federal government, extending it from year 2022 to 2026. The review and extension, according to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abuba Kamalami, on Wednesday became necessary following successes recorded by the administration in its anti-corruption drive. Malami revealed the anti-corruption agencies have been able to secure convictions on behalf of the government in cuts to the tune of over 3,000. The AGF also disclosed that looted phones recovered by the administration both locally and from foreign governments in the last few years amounts to over 1 billion US dollars. At number seven, the Enugu government has donated 10 million naira to victims of herders and farmers clashes in the Agwa, Maede and Buji communities in the Eha, Amufu and Isi Uzo council areas. In a statement by the Secretary to the State Government, Simon Otuwaya, on Wednesday, it said the government would also pay the medical bills of those hospitalized. The government also condemned the clashes and called on security agencies to deploy more personnel to the affected communities to secure lives and property. The government added that it would meet with community leaders to decisively resolve the issues that might have led to the recent attack. 
At number eight, Aquavim State Government said it will commence the distribution of about 3.7 million insecticide treated nets to households across the 31 local government areas of the state from December 17th to 21st, 2022. The Commissioner for Health, Professor Augustine Umo, disclosed the information on Wednesday. Umo was represented by the Executive Secretary, State Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Eno Atta, said the net distribution was part of efforts by the state government to ensure the eradication of malaria in the state. He also said the state government had invested a lot in the malaria eradication program. At number nine, the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom on Wednesday rejected a bid by the devolved Scottish government in Edinburgh to hold a new referendum on independence without London's consent. The unanimous ruling by the Supreme Court torpedoed the Scottish nationalist government's push to hold a second plebiscite next year. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, who leads the Scottish National Party, said she respected the ruling but accused Westminster of showing contempt for Scotland's democratic will. Finally, at number 10, according to reports, members of the European Union's parliament have recognized Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. In a press statement made available via the parliament's website on Wednesday, the members, after a plenary session, held that the actions of the Russian military in Ukraine amounted to acts of terror and constituted war crimes. Parliament also called on the Union's Council to place the Russian paramilitary organization, the Wagner Group, the 141st Special Motorized Regiment, also known as the Kadyrovites and other Russian-funded armed groups, militias and proxies on the EU's terrorist list. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.